Hi guys, it's Mrs. Glenn. Welcome to the 4.7 Solving Linear Systems by Elimination. So first thing is, what is solving systems by elimination? Well, what you do is you either add or subtract the two equations together to eliminate a variable. And I say subtract, but I wrote adding because typically you want to add them together, but sometimes you're subtracting them depending on what it takes to eliminate them. So you can write add or subtract the two equations if you want, but you typically want to add them together. All right, so the steps are, first you wanna make sure your equations are lined up so that you have your x variables with your x variable lined up, up and down, and your y variable with the y variable lined up and down. And you'll see what that looks like later, but we want to make sure that the equations are lined up, step two, is to add or subtract the equations to eliminate the variable with the common coefficient and variable. So you want to add down or subtract down so that you're getting rid of either the x variable or the y variable. And then you want to solve the equation for the remaining variables. So if you get rid of the x variable, you're going to solve for y. And if you get rid of the y variable, you're going to solve for x. Then you want to substitute that answer back into the original equation and solve for the missing variable. All right, so let's show you what that looks like. So because these are um, the same right here, if we actually multiplied this second equation by negative one, we would be able to get the opposite of this y value. So you end up with negative y equals x, negative x, plus 2, because when you distribute the negative 1 into y, you get negative y, negative 1 into x, you get negative x, and negative 1 into negative 2, you get positive 2. So now we can actually just add straight down. So I'm going to rewrite this underneath so that it's lined up. And then you just draw a line, and you can add down. So we have negative y plus y would give us 0 negative 1x plus 3x gives us a positive 2x, and 2 plus 4 is 6. So now we can actually solve for x. So we're going to subtract 6 on both sides. You get negative 6 equals 2x. Then you can divide by 2, and you get negative 3 equals x. So now you can take that negative 3 and go all the way back up into either equation. This one's actually easier to work with. So I'm going to substitute x back in. So I take y, put in instead of x, I'm going to put negative 3, and then minus 2. So negative 3 minus 2 more would be y equals negative 5. So our solution is negative 3, negative 5, because it's x comma y. All right, let's look at the next one. So we have x plus 4y equals 13 and x minus y equals 3. So in this situation, we can actually subtract and get rid of the y's instead of adding. So x minus x would give us 0. 4 minus negative 1, so this is like this, 4 minus negative 1, which is actually 4 plus 1 because minus a negative is plus. So this turns into positive 5y. And 13 minus 3 is 10. Now we can just solve for y. So we divide by 5, and you get y equals 2. So you're going to take that y equals 2, substitute it back up into either equation. This one's a little bit easier to use, the second one. So I'm going to write x minus, and instead of writing y for the original equation, I'm writing 2. And then we're just going to solve for x. So we're going to add 2 and you get x equals 5. So our answer is x comma 5, so or x comma y, which is 5 comma 2. And you're done. Some people like elimination better than substitution. My idea on that is whatever one is easier to use, depending on the type of problem. If you have them already the opposite of each other or the same type of term, then elimination is the way to go. But if you don't, sometimes substitution is the way to go. All right, so for this one, again, we could just subtract. So I'm going to draw my line, 
subtract down. So 3x minus 3x gives us nothing x. That goes away. Negative 10 minus negative 9 is this, looks like this. Negative 10 minus negative 9. So that turns into negative 10 plus 9, which is negative 1y. And then 14 minus 15, well, I'm subtracting more than I had, so I'm going to be a negative 1. Then I divide by negative 1 to get y by itself. The negatives cancel out, leaving us with just a positive 1. So then I can take that positive 1, substitute it back into either equation. I'm going to put it into the first one. So then I have 3x minus 10 times 1 equals 14. Get rid of this little mark here. So 10, negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. Then I would add 10, and you get 3x equals 24. Divide by 3, and you get x equals 8. So your solution is x comma y, which is 8 comma 1. And you're done. Number four, so if we go, um, if we would subtract these two, then we would end up being two minus two and get zero, so I'm gonna subtract them. So we have four minus a negative two, which is the same thing as plus, so four plus two is six x. Two minus two is zero, so that gets rid of the y. And six minus 18, is a negative 12. So now we would divide by 6 because this is gone and you would get x equals negative 2. So now we take that negative 2, plug it back up into either one. I like plugging it into the positive equation because negatives sometimes can make students make mistakes and so if we pick a positive one you're going to have a better chance of not making mistakes. So we have 4 times negative 2 plus 2 y equals 6. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Bring down everything we haven't used. So now we're going to add 8 to both sides. You get 2y equals 14. Divide by 2. y equals 7. So x comma y would be negative 2 comma 7. I like to put a little line between, um, through my 7 so that you know it's a 7. You don't have to. That's just what I do. Number five, so if we just added them, then this would get rid of your x value. So four plus a negative four is just a zero. Nine plus seven is 16. Five plus 11 is also 16. Then this is gone, so you can divide by 16 and you end up getting y equals 1. Take that 1, plug it back into the y right there, so then you get 4x plus 9 times 1 equals 5, which is the same as 4x plus 9 equals 5. Subtract 9, 4x equals negative 4, divide by 4, and you get x equals negative 1. Oh, that's not the solution. It is the ordered pair of negative 1, comma 1. All right, number 6. So if we negative 3 plus 3, so if we added, it would get rid of the y term right here. So if we added straight down, we would get rid of the y. So 10 plus negative 2 is 8x. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0y, which means the y is gone. And 18 plus 6 is 24. Divide by 8 on both sides, and you get x equals 3. Take that 3. Plug it back into the x right there. So you get 10 times 3 minus 3y equals 18, which is 30 minus 3y equals 18. Subtract 30. 
and you get negative 3y equals negative 12 divided by negative 3 and you get y equals negative divided by a negative is a positive 4 so now we have x comma y which is 3 comma 4 and you're done with that one okay so looking here do you see how they're lined up but the equal signs aren't lined up that's okay you want to make sure they're lined up up and down from each other so numbers in front above number y is above y and x is above x so this one if we added 3 plus negative 3y it would get rid of the y so we're going to add so x plus 2x is 3x 3 plus a negative 3 is 0y and 11 plus 16 is 27 so this is gone divide by 3 and you get x equals 9 take that x plug it back in and you get 9 equals 3y plus 11 we would subtract 11 and you would get negative 2 equals 3y divide by 3 and you get negative 2 thirds is y sometimes you get a not so nice answer but in this situation that's what it is so now you take negative two-thirds and you plug it back into just want to make sure I did this right so we added down 2x yep 27 got 9 plugged it back in yeah everything is right okay so negative two-thirds y we're gonna plug it back into the first one again so we have x equals 3 times negative 2 thirds plus 11. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And this is like having a 1 underneath it. So 1 times 3 is 3 plus your 11, which is x equals, this is negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2 plus 11. And that would be a positive 9. So when x is 9, y is negative 2 thirds. So it would be 9, comma, negative 2 thirds. And that's your solution. And it's OK to go back and check your answer if you think that something's wrong when you get a fraction, just like I did, just to make sure. Because sometimes you know, you're know you thinking you're supposed to get a nice, even whole number like we were getting for questions 1 through 6. So it's not a, you know, terrible to go back and check you want to make sure that you're doing it right all right number eight so y and y line up so we can just add them straight down and get rid of the y so 1x plus 3x is 4x negative y plus y is 0y so that's gone and 10 plus 18 is 28 divide by 4 and you get x equals 7 Take that 7, plug it back in where x is. So it's 7 minus y equals 10. Subtract 7. Now yesterday, a student did this instead, and they didn't have to deal with the negatives. So let's do this. Let's add y, and you get 7 equals 10 plus y. Then subtract 10, and you don't have to deal with the negative y. So now we have y, 7 minus 10 is negative 3. So when x is 7, y is negative 3. And your ordered pair solution is 7 comma negative 3. So when you graph these two lines, the solution is at the point 7 comma negative 3. All right, number 9, if we subtracted, then we would get rid of the x value. So 7 minus 7 is 0x, so the x value is gone. 7 minus 10 is negative 3y. And 28 minus 22 is 6. Divide by negative 3. So you get y equals negative 2. Take that, plug it back in up here. So you get 7x plus 7 times negative 2 equals 28, which is negative 14. Add 14, you get 7x equals 42. 
divide by 7, and you get x equals 6. So when x equals 6, y was negative 2, and that is your solution, and you're done. Number 10. So I'm looking here. We don't have anything that is the opposite on the bottom, so this is where you actually have to multiply or divide to get them to be that. Now, actually, the other thing is these are not lined up. So if we rearrange them so they line up, we would actually have them um, in the order we want. So if you take this first one, notice how this has a number on this side. If we subtract 2x to this side, then we would have x and y on this side and a number on that side. So if we subtract 2x from that side, you get 4y minus 2x equals negative 8. But our x value is first, so I'm going to move this to the front. So that's negative 2x and this to the side, which is a positive 4y. So it's just like puzzle pieces. I just move negative 2x to the front and 4y to the back and then drop down this. So now this is the same equation. It's just rearranged so that we solved for negative 8 instead. So now if I bring this down under here, my x values line up, my y values line up, and now I can just add straight down. So negative 2x, and I'm adding because 4 plus negative y, negative 4y would give us 0y. So that gets rid of our y value. So negative 2 plus 5 is a positive 3x. Negative 8 plus 20 is a positive 12. So if we divide by 3, then you end up getting x equals 4. So we take that 4, and we're going to plug it back into one of these. I'm going to do this one. Woo! All right. So we get 4y equals 2 times 4 minus 8. So this turns into 8 minus 8. Well, 8 minus 8 is 0. So this must be 0 in order for that to be happening. But let's just keep going. So... This turns into 4y equals 0, divide by 4, and y would equal 0. So when x is 4, y is 0. And that's the solution for that one. Number 11, ooh, look at this. So if we subtracted down, 3x minus 3x is 0x. Negative 4x minus negative 4, remember that's like this, negative 4 minus a negative 4, which is plus. So negative 4 plus 4 is also 0. And negative 10 minus a negative 13, that's like adding 13. So negative 10 plus 13 is a positive 3. So we cannot have 0 equaling a positive 3. So that means there are no solutions because these two lines are parallel. Number 12, if we add straight down, 2x plus negative 2x is 0x. 1y plus negative y is also 0x. And negative 10 plus 10 is also 0, which means 0 equals 0. So this means this is the same line. So if they're same line, that means there's infinitely many solutions. Because when you have a number equal the number, that means every single number you plug in, it will be an answer for the other one. So infinitely many solutions. Zoom. Go Seahawks. Woo!